or mind. Fix your mind completely on the service of Radha and Krishna and praise their lotus feet. Constantly hear of their names and attributes from the mouths of the devotees and you will reach the pinnacle of bliss. It's another instruction to the mind. And this instruction is very important because it helps me to come closer to the goal of always remembering Radha and Mohan's Leela. Because the mind is very flickering. The mind is mostly engaged in thinking about the daily activities of this body and the circumstances and the judgments of the mind and you know all these ups and downs but if we fix the mind and now you are so lucky you are in Rindavan if that is possible that we fix our minds in their lotus feet, in their activities, in their desires, then Nara Tomdas Thakur is promising. If we hear this from the mouth of the pure devotees, of the bhaktas who have already realizations, then the mind will also become very positive. The mind will cooperate. Gurudev always says that we have to make cooperation. <laughs> and that is important. Because if, as we have heard now many, many times, the cooperation of the mind is when the senses can withdraw to inside activities and we can contemplate. Now here also Anantan Das Babaji will com uh, comment on this. How is this contemplation and how to become more and more uh, acquainted with it in my daily life? In this verse, Taku Mahashai reveals his desire for the exclusive service of Sri Radha Mohan's lotus feet and for attaining the pinnacle of bliss by hearing about the attributes and names of his beloved Sri Sri Radha Madhav from the mouth of the devotees. First he says, O mind, exclusively serve the lotus feet of Sri Radha Krishna. And serve here means both practical and contemplative worship. So that is important also to differentiate. Practical means what I do in my everyday life. When I'm cooking, when I'm cleaning, when I'm dressing, takujis, whatever I do, when I do my archan, when I do my puja, whatever everyone does of us, we all have different, different kinds of daily practices in our homes or now you are in Vrindavan. So all these daily practices, they need to be done in the mood of service. And that happens when I connect my mind to my Ishtadev, to my Radha Krishna, to my Gauranga. And I connect the mind and I I feel that I am doing this for you. It's not for myself. It's, it's all your service. And then I am in so-called connection through service. And then this service connects me. And then the practical service means my external activities with my senses, like cooking and cleaning and 
washing and whatever I do, it becomes contemplation. And that is the difference. That is the difference between bhajan and activities without any connection. And for myself, it is always like a big difference if I can catch myself drifting away in the mind for my, you know, whatever the mind has to say about he said this and she said that and they want this and how can I all make them happy? You know, these daily things that we have. And the difference when I say that, okay, Shimatiratika, now I want to see it is your kitchen. It is your cooking. How can I connect myself with my daily activities? And then it becomes contemplation. And then it becomes a fixed mind. The flickering mind is usually jumping like a monkey, jumping from one branch to another branch. The flickering mind is always making me very uh, unsteady. The flickering mind is making me scattered. And the fixed mind, the fixed mind is such a help in, in deeper contemplation that whatever I do externally, then it will become internal meditation. And that is our goal. This is our prayer that every day, whatever we do, whatever we think, let it be connected to the service of Radha Mohan and Gurudev and all the Vaishnavas. And in Vrindavan, it is much easier because the 24 service is in that regard. When we come back in our um, other ex activities, then it's more of a, you know, let's say, yeah, fixation needed. In Vrindavan, fixation is natural. When you come back to the crazy West, the fixation is also natural, but it depends on how much I remember it and how much I really try to do it. It is easy to be distracted here. So, and then he wants to explain, Ananda Das Babaji, what is exclusive worship? Exclusive worship means surrendering one's life. To Shri Shri Radha, Mohan alone, and worship them as such with deep devotional attachment. So he will also later on explain it more. But this deep devotional attachment means feelings. So maybe right now my stage is that I do many things but not so many feelings are coming. I'm not constantly crying. I'm not constantly, uh, you know, hankering. Oh, when can I see Radha Mohan again? It's like a practical arrangement that I want to do service and I, I have agreement of the mind. That is already very good. But then when the feelings come, when the feelings are added, wow. Wow. That's another dimension. And then maybe uh, surrendering one's life can, can have the meaning that really every second I want to be fully in, uh, you know, Sambanda, in this, you know, who I am. I'm not only this body. I have a spirit soul. I have a, you know, identity. My Gurudev has given me my service, my identity, my identity as a, as a Dasi Tarada. So from that perspective, from the perspective of that internally perceived soul identity, let's say we call it Svarup, we can also say soul body or emotional, transcendental, bhava deha. From that perspective, to serve in that perspective every day, with these feelings, then that is close to perfection. And that is surrendering one's life. Then every breath, every thought, every second is service, is seba. 
Anybody would like to share on this? Because now you are in Rindavan. I'm just like an outsider. I feel I need some help from you. <laughs> <laughs> you are carrying Brindava in your heart. <laughs> Thank you for your prayers <laughs> and your blessings. <laughs> Once I was asking our Gurudev Shilana Rain Maharaj, what does it mean to give one's heart? What does it mean? And he said, well, very easy. To give your heart means to give your energy. And just these days we were thinking that we were doing so much service. And service connects. Whatever service I do for any person, Maybe it be a family member, a friend, or like you are in Vrindavan now, you're serving Gurudev, you're serving Radha Mohan. But now also these days, it's a Christmas time, we do many services also for your families, for the, you know, meeting of Prashad distribution and whatever. Uh, it is an energy, and I ask myself, is this energy fully connected with the mood of Vrindavan? And honestly, I must say, no, it is not, because I'm not completely realized every second of the day. So we were discussing this with Gora, that the service is making a connection. It binds. Anything that we would do for any person, it binds. So let's do service for each other on the spiritual platform. Let's see the soul. I am serving from soul to soul with the consciousness that we can uplift each other to come to the next step in our spiritual journey. So that is already very helpful. And now you are in Vrindavan, you can, you can uh, connect each other, even not only from the general soul level, you can connect each other from, you know, spiritual uh, darcies in the service, if the consciousness is there. So everything we do depends on our individual connection, on our individual realization of who we are. But for sure is any kind of service we do, be it for my mother, my father, my brother, my sister, my teacher, my friends, any kind of service I do for another person, it will bind me to that person. That's why we go to Vrindavan, because there we do service in that consciousness that let me bind my heart to the lotus feet of our Radha Krishna, of our Gauranga Mahaprabhu, of our Gurudev, of our brothers and sisters, and let these relations, let these feelings dominate my heart so that when I go and I'm going back to my home, to my work, to my family, let me feel the soul in every living entity and let us connect on that level. At least that is my prayer. And Naratam Das Thakur is, of course, on a completely different level because he is a fully 108% surrendered soul and 108% realized in his uh, spiritual existence. Okay, now comes a paragraph where he is explaining that um, when we want to surrender 108% really fully, then it is important for us to check where we are in our, you know, where we are in our activities. And he is explaining, Baba is explaining, in Hari Bhakti Vilas, four kinds of exclusivity, exclusive, how does it say, exclusivity? Yeah, you know what I mean. Exclusive devotion is mentioned. And these four points that are very important to check myself. I am also trying to check myself all the time, but I must often also fail. 
But that doesn't mean that I not continue. <laughs> because here it is said, for example, not losing one's devotional attachment even when obstacles arise. That is one of the points that will guide us to exclusive devotion. Obstacles we all have in our lives. Obstacles are sometimes, you know, difficult relationships that seem to hinder my devotional mindset. Or sometimes financial problems. I don't know how to get to Vrindavan. I don't have the money for a flight. Or sometimes health issues. No. Even if I would like to go to a holy place, I cannot move. My bones are, you know, not working anymore. But here, Naratom Dastako or Baba is explaining that serving with attachment, with devotional attachment, even when obstacles arise, that is a very important checkpoint in our bhaktis. And then it is exclusive because it means it doesn't depend on anything anymore. So we have to, I would like to, I don't want to say we, I just say I. I would like to learn this kind of uh, devotion that is not dependent on external circumstances anymore. Oh, I can be only devotional when this and that and that and that. No, let me try. Let me live in my devotion, in my bhakti, in my love to the divine couple. In any moment, even if I will be, you know, hindered in any external way that I cannot do what I would like to do. For example, going to Vrindavan, going to live with my Gurudev, or going to live with the Vaishnavas. All these points, they seem to be obstacles, but they are not. If we are internally fully, fully, fully connected, and that dep depends only on our desire, our greed and our, you know, intense um, endeavor to do so, even crying for it would be an option. And then also not depending on fruitive activities, on philosophical, non-dualistic speculation. That is also a point. Actually, these four points, they remind me of Rupa Goswami's uh, verse, Anyabilashita Shunyam, that we have heard so many times about our exclusive devotion. That is, it, it is continuous surrendering in any second, not being attached to external identification, like I have to be a scholar, I have to know all the scriptures, I have to you know, be in a position in the society of devotees. That is Vanashandam. I have to follow this and that. I am from this ashram, from that group. No, it is all external. And uh, one point here is also soul dedication to praying. Means really that... Whatever happens in my life, all these ups and downs, all these things that are always changing and life is always changing, I always commit myself to serve divine love, to search for divine love and to live as good as I can in the consciousness of divine love. And that is Prem. And prema bhakti jaha hoite avidya vinashayate. When this level comes, that my prema bhakti will be revived, this consciousness, the mind will be co cooperative, and that I can be in a flow of this. Now I have interruptions. But when the flow comes, then the ignorance is destroyed. And then realizations come on their own accord. So I, I, I am not there, that is for sure. But I know the goal, I hanker for the goal, I pray for the goal, and I beg and I borrow and I steal to reach it. <coughs> My position, it's just uh, the way it is. And just speaking about it makes me uh, enthusiastic. And I... Uh, I hope you will also help me. Somebody would like to share on it. 
So this is it. Um, <coughs> it's on? It's on, I can oh. hear you. Yeah, this is, uh, this is Haribakti Bilas mentioned. One is uh, this in interest in Varnashram Dharma. Mm -hmm. You know, Varnashram Dharma is like Varna uh, and Ashrama. And uh, for, for, uh, what do you say? Uh, you know, Shudra, Orders of life, yeah. Yeah. And Shudra, Vaishya, and the, the uh, caste, Shakurin. the caste. Yeah, caste, mm -hmm. and, you know, Varuna, and Ashram, Brahmachari, Gurihasta, Banaprasta, and Sanyas. So this always connected with this material body. So, yeah. uh, actually, this is uh, important, but, uh, you know, for ultimately, not important. For our Swarupa, it doesn't, you know, we don't need this one. Of course, you know, as long as material body exists, you know, we have some relationship with this one. But if we have spiritual consciousness, we completely beyond it. And also this one also, fruitive activity and mental speculation, this philosophical mm. speculation. This fruitive activities, we are designing some always result, some kind of reward. So, and uh, always we are thinking duality. This is good. This is bad. This is uh, correct. This is uh, wrong. Or this person I like. This person I don't like. <laughs> this is success. This is failure. So material life means always connect to this duality. This person is beautiful, this person is not beautiful, this person is very, you know, nice looking, this person is not nice looking. So this kind of duality is material consciousness. Also, yeah. we are thinking, well, you know, we want to liberate from this material you know, body and we want to become God, we want to merge the Supreme Lord. This also a kind of, say, sense of gratification, kind of we desire some kind of, you know, relief for my benefit. So spiritual life is, so Guru Dev was a, a few days ago say, like a, a vegan mentality. I do whatever I like. This is material consciousness. The spiritual consciousness, I do whatever my Ishtadeva likes. This is, you know, different. So this is, sometimes we may thinking, oh, why we don't, we don't desire liberation? Because liberation lose our identity, spiritual identity. And also we lose spiritual connection with our Ishtadeva. Also we lose the service. So therefore we don't like it. And then, some obstacle come, then we start thinking, why we are doing this bhakti? Because, you know, so many, we are doing bhakti, but many problem, problem is coming. So we are thinking like material life, similar way. But if we think, oh, let me, you know, let us see what's the goal of our life. Our goal, goal is attend to Radha's lotus feet and Radha's seva. In, in Kunja or Nikunja or spiritual world. So if we fix it, anywhere, wherever we live, wherever, you know, material body, we have to, we have to experience some kind of happiness, some kind of distress because of our, you know, previous uh, activity, previous karma. So if we fix it, our, our, uh, determination, our goal is not to move it. But if we start thinking, oh, I'm this, this body, then why doing this material, you know, why I'm doing this seba? But uh, I'm not to do, you know, I'm not happy. But the Radha Rani's mood is, you know, I'm care. Radha's happiness, Radha's Mohan's happiness. But I don't care my happiness. 
But the material conscious person thinking, I care my happiness. If, if I'm not happy, then I, I don't do this. So this is very interesting. Also, four things, soul dedication to prema. So mm-hmm. this prema, prema we may say, prema is Radha Shakti, Guru Dev said. Mm-hmm. So prema is like, uh, you know, one aspect of Radha. So Suniti is just saying, so a giving heart means giving energy. Mm. So like energy and that person, we cannot, you know, separate. Say, if I say Suniti and Suniti's energy, difficult to, you know, difficult to separate, you know, difficult to divide. So Suniti's cooking means Suniti using her energy for cooking. So therefore, you know, if you go to Suniti's house, you know, Gorasundra's house, some, some dishes, some nice, you know, uh, some dishes coming. This is kind of, you know, Suniti's energy or Goras Sundar's energy coming, you know, through like money, through, you know, their endeavor. So this, we may say, this is Prema, we may understand this is Radhika or Radha's energy. So, means, Radha means love. So our concern is not to ego. We concern the love. So, especially Guru Dev teach us, uh, what is it? Uh, beauty of real love. So, this, you know, four things is very interesting. And, uh, this, this is same as Guru Dev's teaching and our Acharya's teaching. I think no different. <laughs> Yeah, it's wonderful. And it's always interesting to check where we are. Yes. So, Raseshwari Didi, want to share? Is okay? Yes. Rade, Rade. Do you hear me, Suniti? Yes, yes. I want to say thank you to your words. It touched me very deeply in my heart. <laughs> and um, what what came to my heart is also when... I use my energy and do something with my heart energy, I will not get tired to do this. When I do something without heart because it's my duty and I'm not really connected, um, then I get tired. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's an important point. Yeah, and, and when I do something my, and with my heart and I feel happy to do this, and I, sometimes I will become, you no, know, um, I will get energy from this and will be happy to do this. This, yes. for, is, this is my check. <laughs> when I'm tired, when I do, then I know, oh, I'm not really uh, in the seva mood. And what you told me that helps me very much to to remind me to do things always to check and to say, Oh Swamini, I do this for you and whatever I do. <laughs> yes, that's what I want to share. Yes, wonderful. Thank you. I also check it and when I get tired then I think, my God, I need a rest or I need to change my consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But usually, yeah, when we do things by our heart, with our involvement, with our dedication, we receive a lot of joy and energy because that is Shimati Radhika's realm. It's her realm of, of devotion and she will give. Uh, we are connected and then we receive and we can continue to share and to serve. Yes, Radha Charan Prabhuji. Sunitiji, sometime it's... Uh possible to change the consciousness by relax. <laughs> yeah, also. <laughs> yeah. Good point. That is also a tendency in devotees. They always overwork. <laughs> they don't sleep and they overwork and then they get sick. So we need to become balanced. But in Rindavan, you are such a good team of love and divine you know, support with each other. You will help each other. And you know now, also, we have to relax, and then when we relax, we can go in deep inner meditation. 
if we don't, if we cannot sleep, just we can contemplate what we have heard. You know, the devotee is always, we try to connect somehow, externally, internally, you know, as the circumstances allow. Yes, thank you all. Now, taking shelter of a certain object of meditation according to, uh, no, wait a minute, according to the revealed scriptures and meditating on that in such an exclusive manner that it flows without interruption, like a stream of oil, so that it cannot be interrupted by any other unfavorable subject anymore. That is the, the definition of, of uh, upasana, means sitting close or coming into the, you know, deep uh, meditational state. That taking shelter of a certain object or person, you know, connecting in such a way like we want, like serving Srimati Radhika, and then exclusive, that means without any uh, external interruptions, without any judgments, without uh, any uh, mind and caste and, you know, all these, how do you say, hodgepodge in our brains that sometimes comes. And when that flows, that meditation flows, then it becomes, uh, you know, such a powerful meditation. And that Baba says that target, our target is to serve the beloved deity in such an exclusive manner, to serve Shimati Radhika in such an exclusive way. Means really focused, means really deep. Can I tell something? Yes. Sure. <clears throat> I remember Shonaran Gasamaraj explained to us what to approach is exist in this case means uh, how to constantly meditate on the object. And uh, one approach is from Ashtanga Yoga, it's means by will, person increasing his will by different uh, authorities and so on. Other approach is what is our Shiva Gurudev is giving here, he telling about relationship, because in relationship, closeness and feelings coming, hmm. means attachment, then attachment coming, then, what is happening? You, it's uh, spontaneously, 24 hours, always thinking about this person. Mm. And then this meditation will be not interrupted. Prema so, coming, because feelings coming, prema coming, it will be how it's, it's written here, exclusive devotions to the prema. Prema so, coming from Srimati Radhika and for Srimati Radhika. It's coming in heart, and you just following this. Yeah, I hope. So, so Suniti and the dear devotees. So, I want to share yesterday's talking with Gurudev. Yes, please. Uh, yesterday was <laughs> amazing talking. So, anyway, so one devotee is asking Gurudev. So. Uh, you know, because uh, to chanting number increase is, you know, sometimes say it is very good. So, which one should I chant, Maha Mantra or Gayatri? Uh, it's, you know, good question, you know. So, one devotee asking question. 75 years. <laughs> so, which one is should we chant, Maha Mantra more? Or Gayatri mm -hmm. more, or um, according to Gayatri, which Gayatri should chant more? <laughs> <laughs> this yes. is, you know, it, and then, and then Guru Dev was, you know, answer is very interesting. So, if you feel good, or if you have more taste, that mantra should you should chant. So it means. Uh, if you, if you chanting Maha Mantra, if you feel more, you know, uh, more feel kind of more taste, more attachment, then you can chant Maha Mantra. Or you can chant, you know, say, Kama Gayatri, 
more taste, more attachment, then you can chant Kamehameha. If you chant Radha Gayatri and you attach more taste, then you can chant Radha Gayatri. You know, like this. And then he's saying, most important thing is not the number. Most important thing is taste. Because if we have taste, mm. and then feeling coming. <laughs> then, you know, more we want to do. But, uh, you know, we have some tendency, especially me, like kind of tendency to, okay, I should chant this number of mantra, you know, or I should chant, you know, 16 rounds, or, you know, one rack, or, you know, this round, that round. But that's also okay. But uh, Gurudev is saying, actually, its taste is more important. This raga. Yeah. Of raga. Yeah. When I, I think, when I'm thinking, I must do this and that quantity is Swadhi Bhakti. Yes. But what Gurudev told, it means exclusive devotion to the prema, to the feelings. Yes. So yesterday was, you know, we are discussing like this, you know. Also, this is nice. Yeah, wonderful. So basically, if we... <laughs> so, Mahanaharaji, you want to share? No, I just wanted to check in, double check in. So if we chant whichever mantra we have most taste for, then the number will automatically increase, right? Yes. Yes, that was my... You know, still myself, you know, like, uh, like, uh, say, you know, we, we, I don't know. We, like, especially we, we go through by the, so we promise some certain number of, you know, rounds. So therefore, you know, still I have some, some tendency, oh, I should chant at least this round, that mm. round. But uh, still, still in that round, try to increase to, to our taste. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, we see, some, if we go to Guru Dev's room, now uh, Parama Guru Dev is chanting there. And uh, also one day, uh, I remember also Narayan Maharaj chanting. He did not, uh, you know, chant so much like a uh, kind of, you know, outside, you know, but, uh, and also once I, I, ch I hear Gora Kamita Swami chanting, you know, oh my God, very amazing. Because why amazing? Because, you know, very, it's, it seems slow, very tasting, you know, <laughs> definitely. I can understand, oh, he's really tasting. So, therefore, a good day chanting also, you know, and uh, so, if, if we understand someone who is tasting, just hearing that vibration, we understand, you know. So, Parama Guru Dev chanting also very, far say, pleasing to our heart. So, just. I want to add something. Jananji inspired me. <clears throat> I want, uh, just from my own uh, life, one example how it's working. Uh, how what what it's uh, what really important to follow the feelings of heart, the raga. I chant in morning time here, uh, Gayatri, meditate on Swarupa, Gayatri, and I was very inspired. And in particular moment, I. I started to feel no more insp inspiration. It just become empty. I, I feel I started to worry what I did wrong. It was so inspired. I did according to this inspiration, this feeling, this raga. What I did wrong? And I thought, oh, maybe something important happening in Gurudev's room. It was morning time. It was before 6.30, before morning reading, but must be maybe something happening there. Let us to go and see. And I started to, and then I come just, uh, to, uh, I came to the uh, Gopishwar Mahan Mandir. Wow, today is Monday, today is in six o'clock, very, very important Abhisheka, which I do in every Monday. 
it's my relationship <laughs> with Gopi Sharma. I forget about him. Ah, I understood. Price inspiration gone. <laughs> and I ran inside and I was, I came in almost in proper time. I did what I, uh, as usual. Wow. It's, it's how it's working, <laughs> I understand. Rade. Now you know Gopesh Mama, they, he called you. Yeah. Wonderful. That's nice. And also sometimes, you know, sometimes, uh, so Mah Mahaprabhu said, Shiksha Shtaka, you know, to another piece, Nichina. And, uh, you know, sometimes we have tendency, you know, we, you know, like a puff to up. Sometimes, you know, oh, you know, I'm so fortunate. I have this, you know, such and such. I have such association. I have, you know, such, such, such and such. And then Radha Mohan smashed me, you know. So, like, uh, sometimes Radha Mohan take off our kind of, what do you say, uh, uh, enthusiasm sometimes. Mm -hmm. If we puffed up. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we, we need always, you know, be humble, you know, and uh, too much, too much, if I say, if something good thing happening, we should not do too much, you know, joyful. My experience, you know, like uh, before I did, and I was taking so, so, you know, many things, you know, I was, I was, uh, if I said, taken by Radha <laughs> Mohan. <laughs> yeah, that's also very important to take my own uh, attitude, and if if my if I cannot check myself, then somebody else will check me. <laughs> it will come naturally. The situations in our life, and especially in Vrindavan with Radha Mohan. They will show and then we ask, oh my God, why I have no taste? What did I do wrong? Or is something going on? Where should I? Uh, again, navigation. Huh? That's the navigation of Radha Mohan also. Another point I would like to read and share with you is so beautiful now. About relationship and feeling is important to to do our, you know, daily activities in this kind of uh, desires. If I don't feel anything, then pray that some feelings come. Pray that I feel connected. Pray that I, even if I feel disconnected, that I can understand what it needs to feel connected again. So here is a quote from Srila Bhakti, Vila Bhakti uh, Baladev Vidya Bhushna Swami about service, seva. Service means rendering service with body, mind and words. And then comes uh, something in this connection from Jiva Goswami, sevanam chittanu vritti, understanding the mind of the person you serve is called service. So here we go quickly into a very personal relationship. Like we can chant, but if we don't connect to the person that we're chanting to, Radha and Mohan, Gauranga Mahaprabhu, Gurudev, in our Guru Mantras, we have to desire at least deeply pray that to connect to the person and then also when we do service for example now you are in Munger Rajvandi you can serve Gurudev you can bring him Prashad you can uh, help him uh, find his shoes you can clean the room you can fold the blanket all these things what are they good for? Because we want to understand the mind of Gurudev. Means his heart. Where is his heart and his mind in connection to Swamini? Because if we want to enter into our spiritual identities, in our, our transcendental services, then we need to feel Gurudev. We need to feel our brothers and sisters. It's that inner connection 
that is expressed even by a glance of the eyes only or a smile. That silent connection from heart to heart in the service. And I find this meditation very beautiful. To try to feel what is, you know, the mood of Gurudev, of our service together, or like you said, Radhacharan, what is the mood? Why I lost now the taste? Oh, Gopeshwara was calling me. Wow, that was important. I want to build a connection with all the important persons who are helping me to reach my goal so that I can feel my relationship to Shimati Radhika. And if I am in the service of Shimati Radhika, then it's also very important to feel what she needs, to always be alert, to always be attentive in every situation. And we are practicing this with each other in our relationships, in our personal behavior, in our, you know, how do you say this, the antennas. But these are the antenna, antennas of the heart. We are trying to feel each other. It's not only coexistence in a holy space, which is very auspicious, but we try to feel each other. Also now we are connecting uh, over a long distance, but what we would like to have from the Zoom is a personal feeling. We want a personal relationship. We want a personal feeling. When I look into your eyes, when I hear your voice, the sound vibration, it does something to my heart. And then the way I talk to you, I know it does something to your heart. So we would like to vibrate on these levels of love. We want to become personal and we want to become very personal in the service of Shimate Radhika through the help of her dasis. So understanding the mind of the person you serve is called service. Isn't that beautiful? What is the use of any service that is done without trying to feel each other? Okay, sometimes I clean the, the uh, garbage, but I do it when I see that it's full. Oh, I need to clean it, good if your garbage is full. I want that, you know, we can uh, fill it again and you don't sit close to the garbage that is so full and maybe smelling. And in Gurudev Rome, there's always a lot of service. Ah, we want to see Gurudev. Yeah, yeah, that is up to his desire, Divya Prem. I don't know if the camera crew did it or not. <laughs> she takes a rest to eat tea. Hmm? What do you say, Razeshwari? Gurudev takes a rest. Yeah. Today he, he was very active and does his walk outside and now he is resting. Radhe, okay, now we have the answer. So you keep and, connected? Yeah, and today he did not, Gurudev did not, could not sleep at night. Oh, okay, yeah. So therefore, you know, he need, I think, now take rest. Very good. See, you know what I mean? These are the date, the details. If you are not connected to a person, then you don't know why they don't show up. <laughs> but now we know Gurudev needs rest. Gurudev has a you know, not a good night of sleep. And so then we understand that's why it doesn't show up. Sundaram, how are you? Fine, thank you. <laughs> Sorry I'm late today. No problem, I was also late. No problem. So giving the heart to Radha Mohan in the external practitioner's body and posh, passionately worshipping them, praising them, performing worship of them, hearing and chanting their glories, and within the mind rendering service within the spiritual body, the Siddha Deya, according to the Ashtakalya Lila, understanding the desires of their minds. This is exclusive service. So 
so that is very important that we have this exclusive service mentality. We want to fix the mind. That is what Nado Tom Dostako is saying, fixing, praying to the mind that, oh, please, you and me, my dear mind, we were born at the same time. Let us fix together in the lotus feet of Radha and Mohan. And then serve with the soul dedication, serve with the concentration as best as we can, but not with the pressure that will, you know, take away the, the taste. But try to develop this natural taste, the natural love, just like it flows between a boy and a girl. And then I want to jump, because the time is getting a little bit short, but I want to jump in the, in the purport to this text, to this verse, to the last uh, paragraphs. When I was reading the verse, I thought, wow, it is such a nice meditation to connect in a personal way and develop service with the feelings of what the person that we are serving really desires. What is Srimati Radhika's desire? How can I assist her now, today, and in this situation with my Sadaka Deha and also in my spiritual meditations on the divine Astakalya Lila? Or where is Radharani now? It is here in Germany, 1249. Are they still at Radhakund or did they have to set? separate already and go back to their homes like this i can check according to some timings and feel you know always connect myself feelingly to the spiritual uh dimensions and another paragraph here i wanted to share with you it is about the praising of hearing the topics about radha mohan from the mouth of the great devotees. That is a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, four, fourth canto, chapter uh, 20, verse 24. Oh, you who is praised with the choice verses, even the air, the breath, which is full of the drops of the nectar of your lotus feet, emanating from the mouth of the great saints, restores spiritual knowledge to us, the fallen yogis who have forgotten the path leading through to the truth. Hence, we require no more boons, but kindly bestow this boon. And that is uh, this verse. It was really when I read it, I thought, wow, how can I apply it in my Dasi Bhav? How can I apply it in my inner life as a worshipper of Shimati Radhika, as a worshipper and aspiring devotee to come into my spiritual existence? So this breath that comes from the mouth of the devotees who are praising Radha Mohan, this is actually the inspiration that is keeping us alive. And here they are fallen yogis who are praying, but we can also say any kind of fallen soul like me. We have forgotten the path leading to the truth. And always we need to restore it. I need to revive it. I, re I need to remember it. I need to connect to it. And that is the only boon, that's the only benediction that we need. To connect to the breath of those who are glorifying Srimati Radhika. And that is Prashad. So this speaking and listening... It is the prashad. Like Jainanda Maharaj, you said so nicely that where who is cooking is putting the energy inside. But actually also who is speaking is putting energy inside. Everything we do 
in any activity is putting energy. And if this energy is connected with Swamini, with Shrimati Radhika, we can perceive it and we can feel it. And that's why we are eager to listen to these topics and to exchange and to share our feelings on our path and to come closer to each other, feel each other and love and attach to each other because we share the same goal. So we, when we listen to Gurudev's kata, we get the prashad of his feelings. We get the mercy of his feelings. And that's why we listen from him with so much eagerness. And for the Dasis, it's even more important because these words that come from Dur Gurudev's mouth is from a Dasi who is more you know, connected with Swamini than me. So by listening these words, I also become connected. I also can develop more eagerness. I can also develop more feelings and come, you know, closer to my own connection to Srimati Radhika. And even the air, it said here, the breath is full of drops of nectar of her lotus feet. So I thought, wow, that is a nice meditation. If I listen from any great Vaishnava, their breath and their talks are like emanations of their hearts. And that can inspire my heart to be, you know, more in tune. And let's make a big orchestra of love, of devotion, of surrender, and inspire each other. And then I was thinking on the next level of the Siddha Deha. And I was thinking of verse number 89 in Vilapa Kusmanjali. You remember when Shimati Radhika is teaching Tulsi how to play a song on the Veena. And I thought, you know, I was always wondering, why does Shimati Radhika teach the Dasis how to play a song or to sing a poem or whatever, if she could do it herself. So she is putting her prashad into the breath, into the heart of the Dasis. You now she is singing a song which is about Shimati Radhika. And she is singing the song at that moment when Krishna has fainted, when Mohan has fainted. So we are when we are in our Siddha Dehas, when we listen about the you know pastimes of Raghunathas Goswami, who is Tulsi Manjari, and she is receiving the prashad of Shimati Radhika's song for Mohan, and she is delivering this prashad with her feelings for Shimati Radhika, with her love. So that's the double, double, uh, let's say, dose for Mohan that he has to wake up. He has to enjoy. He has to be, you know, overwhelmed by this sound vibration that he is getting so much love. Shimati Radhika's Prashad through the Manjaris. <sighs> And I felt this was so, you know, I thought this was Gurudev's mercy. I am here uh, sitting in Germany in a household, you know, cooking, cleaning, and I'm running to go to some Christmas markets to sell some shawls. <laughs> it's a crazy schedule at the moment, I tell you. And, uh, um, but still, when I, I sit down and I really commit myself to the deep, feelings that I would like to have, you know, by listening and sharing with you, because I don't want it to be empty. I want that we all become full and that I myself also am fulfilled with this love of Shrimati Radhika's lotus feet. And so I thought, wow, this verse is really beautiful. And Gurudev and, you know, Shrimati Radhika, they give some mercy that they reveal that the mercy, it comes also through the breath, through the words, 
to the sound vibration, not only when I chant my mala, but when I listen to the Vodis, when I exchange with the Vodis, and when I chant and I read. For example, I like to chant and read together. I have to confess this to you. Maybe it's quite crazy, but I do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading one verse and then I chant and then I meditate and I contemplate and then yeah if I'm lucky then I get some prashad <laughs> I get some mercy so this morning when I was thinking which verse to take and I always pray that the verses will come by their own desire because the verses are also you know prashad they are the prashad of nara tamda stako and the the commentaries are the prashad of of uh, ananta das babaji so we could say also they are the dasis they are giving us their prashad in their service mm -hmm. and we are receiving that mercy that prashad and so then with this feeling my heart can also connect and then also, you know, I can really feel something which was before maybe more empty or more externally oriented. And that is, I think, uh, uh, the, re you know, the, the reward of any kind of service, whether it be reading or chanting or listening or cooking, or cleaning, or, or ironing, or anything, the reward is always that I feel more connected, like Razeshwari said so nicely, and I get more energized. So I thank you also for giving me the possibility to associate with you all through the Zoom, and thank you all for your ears and your eagerness and your love. I cannot speak to all of you personally, but I feel all of you and I love all of you. And uh, I hope to meet you in Rundavan soon again. And uh, we are lucky that we have this possibility to come closer to Shimate Radhika and be guided in that. <laughs>